Considering how much Donald Trump seems to despise immigrants, I was surprised to uh, see what his position on the Syrian refugees is. It sounds damn near compassionate. Let's watch. Something has to be done. It's a, an unbelievable humanitarian okay. problem. Israel's not taking any. Britain's taking a few, maybe 5,000. You know thousands will come to the United States of migrants. Now, do you object to migrants who are getting out of the Middle East and North Africa? Do you object to them coming to the USA? I hate the concept of it, but on a humanitarian basis with what's happening, you have to. You know, this was started by President Obama when he didn't go in and do the job when he should have, when he drew the line in the sand, which turned out to be a very artificial line. But, you know, it's, uh, it's living in hell in Syria. There's no question about it. They're living in hell. I'm going to pick holes in a little bit of what he said there, but overall, he seems okay with us bringing in refugees. Overall, he does. So it seems like his argument is sound and it's okay. And, you know, but it's just interesting that he has that type of empathy or sympathy for Syrian refugees, which he absolutely should have. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't extend the same type of sympathy to other immigrants, right? So, I mean, does he know what's been going on in Mexico? I mean, things have you know, died down a little bit with mm -hmm. the cartel situation. But between like 2006 and 2010, over 60,000 people were murdered in Mexico because yeah. of cartel violence. Living in hell. So they were living in hell and people were being decapitated. They were yeah. being hanged from bridges. And so many Mexican immigrants came into the United States looking for a better life and looking to get away from that hell. But he yeah. doesn't extend the same type of sympathy to them. For some reason, with the Syrian refugees, he's okay with it. It's a humanitarian effort by the United States to take them in. But for anyone else, especially those Mexicans, no, 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 we can't have it. Yeah. And again, I, I believe that it's a humanitarian effort regardless of where you're from, especially if you're living in a country where violence is taking hold of everything. Yeah. Uh, in particular, a country in which the violence was contributed to and continues to be contributed to by our country. Exactly. Uh, now, we'll have to see if he if he maintains this position once he finds out where Syria is and the fact that some of them are actually Muslim. I don't think he actually knows any of that. Uh, so maybe he'll change his mind at that point. I do like that he said, the, the particular thing he said was, I hate the concept of it. But on a humanitarian basis with what's happening, you have to. But so why do you hate the concept of it? It's almost like, like have ah, I guess oh, we have to do it, but I really don't want yeah. to. Right. In the end, he'd bring them in, so that's good, but I do like that. I also, by the way, the way O'Reilly framed that whole thing was, uh, Britain's not, they took like a little bit, uh, there's a couple of countries not taking any, so we shouldn't, right, too? Yeah. Why not say, okay, Turkey's taking in a million, Lebanon's taking in more than a million, so don't we also have the responsibility, considering that we bombed the hell out of Syria and Lebanon didn't? Like, you can frame that in different ways. He chose the one where he focuses on the people who are saying no to the refugees. I know I'm beating a dead horse when I say that he's not educated on these issues, especially when it comes to something as complicated as foreign policy. But during that interview, he said, this was started by President Obama when he didn't go mm. in and do the job he should have when he drew the red line in the sand, when he turned out to be very, which turned out to be a very artificial line. So he's referring to the red line, meaning chemical weapons used by Bashar al-Assad against the rebels. Yeah. Now, Assad did use chemical weapons, and Obama was ready to invade Syria over that, or at least take some sort of military action against Syria as a result of that. But then Russia came in and negotiated a deal, and thankfully, we didn't go after Assad. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm saying thankfully is not because I'm in favor of Assad, but because the situation in Syria is much more complicated than someone like Trump could ever realize. Remember, Assad is fighting against ISIS, mm -hmm. right? So Assad is an enemy, but ISIS is an even bigger enemy. If we did away with Assad, who knows what would have happened? Now, the rebels include people who are great and they're fighting for the right cause, but it also includes mm -hmm. militants, okay, that would basically push a terrorist agenda if they have any more power in the country. Yeah. So to blame this on Obama not going after Assad or not, you know, taking any military action against Syria is a stupid comment to say the least. Yeah, it's stupid and it's also exactly what every other Republican candidate would have said in his place. Right. So this is the this is the maverick that, you know, doesn't agree with the establishment. He's willing to, to be bold and speak the truth and all that, except that he doesn't, either because as you say, he doesn't actually know what actually happened there, or he just feels the need that, oh, I'm supposed to blame Hillary and Obama or some combination right. of the two. It's not uh, in particular uh, a result of what Obama has done. And by the way, 
we disarmed Syria of their chemical weapons. By and large, exactly. we have not had many reports of any sort of chemical weapons use in Syria. So it seems like his policy worked to that extent. It is hell in Syria, but it would be even worse if they still had access to the chemical weapons that Assad had been using. Um, yeah, and, and by the way, the whole sentence that you read about the that he didn't go in, do the job he should have done, then he drew the line in the sand, and it's actually an artificial line. How much more could you sound like Sarah Palin than right there? I know. It's, I, so his you sentence just, you, was so poorly said, yeah. grammatically speaking, that I was like, I, what is he trying? Oh, okay, he's trying to blame Obama. I got it. Yeah. It's like you just start talking. You have no idea where you want to end up. And you, Okay, I need a metaphor here. Oh, reference to freedom here. I have no, what was I talking about? I don't know. He yeah. definitely should run with her. Uh, but... While he was willing to at least say that he would bring uh, some of the refugees in, which many Republicans probably disagree with, uh, with Scott Walker, another guy running against him who was at least at one point considered a very serious candidate, we have no fucking idea what he would do in reference to the refugees because this is another issue that he refuses to give his actual position on. Uh, he was asked, would he bring in other uh, refugees? And he says, I'm not president today and I can't be president today. <laughs> Everybody wants to talk about hypotheticals. There is no such thing as a hypothetical. Well, Except well, first there of all, are. There, there are hypotheticals. I looked it up. That's what the word literally means. They exist. Um, every Everything you've been talking about on the campaign trail is based on hypotheticals of where the country would be and what would be going on were you to be president. That's the whole point of campaigning, yeah. right? Um, he has no idea what he would do, which is mm. why he's dodging the questions with these ridiculous excuses. Yeah. Scott Walker is a nightmare, and thankfully he doesn't really stand a chance. Yeah, and he's a super inconsistent nightmare too, because he goes on to say, I'm talking about what I would do as president. That'll be a year and a half from now. I'm going to take on ISIS as president. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. How? You're, How are you going to take no, them on? You're, he's talking about hypotheticals there. <laughs> ISIS might not even be around in a year and a half. How could we talk about something that's not today? How? I mean, can you imagine? You're going to school for a certain field of work. Like, let's just say journalism for the sake of this conversation. Mm -hmm. You're going to school for journalism and you're taking a journalism ethics class and you're given a hypothetical. Okay, you have this personal <laughs> information about a CEO, for, for instance, who is not a hypocrite, who hasn't done anything against yeah. you know, the gay community, but you have information outing him as a gay individual. Do you actually publish that information? Can you imagine a journalism student saying, well, I'm not a journalist, so I don't know. Like, I, I'm, I haven't graduated yet. Yeah, it's a hypothetical, so I don't know. And what are those, whatever. really? No, really, what are those? It, I don't know. The, the only type of person who answers that way is a person who hasn't put much thought behind it. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what Scott Walker is guilty of. Yeah, and that you could have been talking about almost any issue right yeah. there. Yeah. Donald Trump similarly, but he, he gives his gut reaction on the issues, and sometimes it lines up with what seems to be the moral course. Uh, more often than not, that's not the case.